What's the best comedy movie you have ever watched? Edgar Wright movies like Hot Fuzz or Shaun of the Dead. Tommy Boy. The duo of Farley and Spade is phenomenal. I watched Best in Show for the first time two weeks ago. I was on a flight back home and could not stop laughing. Good stuff. My cousin Vinny. It's smart. It's hilarious. And it's got some superb acting in it. The Birdcage. The way Robin Williams and Nathan Lane play off of each other is amazing. And it's easily my favorite comedy. Gene Hackman and Hank Azaria just make the movie that much better. Airplane. One of the greatest spoof movies of all time. I don't care how many times I watch it. I will always die laughing at super bad. Zoolander. It's such a quotable. Stupid movie that captures the essence of 2000s comedy flicks. Office Space. It gets better as I age and it gets more relevant. As a hardcore zombie fan. Shaun of the Dead holds a special place in my heart. Haven't seen Galaxy Quest mentioned. It's hilarious. Scrolled forever but couldn't find this as Spinal Tap. That one goes to 11 every time. Trading Places. Absolutely brilliant writing. Runner Up. The Jerk. I don't think I've ever gone to a theater and laughed at anything harder than Super Troopers. Blazing Saddles. The Producers. Robin Hood. Men in Tights. Basically. Any Mel Brooks movie will have me laughing till I cry. He's going to be sorely missed when he passes away. They pick at their skin until it hurts? Yeah I do it because of anxiety. You aren't alone. I pick my cuticles until my fingers are raw. My heels until I have gouged out flesh and I scratch skin off my scalp. It's an anxiety response. I used to do that as a kid. But I've completely outgrown it. I used to always pick around my fingertips and my toe tips and always start to bleed. Sometimes my socks would have blood spots. Gosh. It reminds of how much blood I used to spill and now I don't bleed unless I get injured. I have done it since I was a child because of anxiety. Usually around my fingernails slash fingertips. Sometimes until they bleed when I'm at my most anxious. The only thing that stops me is getting gel nails or having something on my nails that prevents the picking for a while. I've been off sick from work for my mental health about 4 weeks. I'm picking my spots repeatedly. Pulling strands of hair out. Pulling the skin off my lips until they bleed. I look terrible and it makes me feel bad so I keep picking. It's a vicious cycle. I wish I could stop it but like you. Half of the time I don't realize I'm doing it. Yes. I think it's one of the many ways my anxiety manifests itself. And. Yes. It is also the bottoms of my feet. I became insecure about them since starting in manufacturing and often run my fingers over the rough spots caused by standing in steel toe boots all night. That turned into a foot picking slash peeling habit that's not only gross but painful. Using a pumice stone on them and stopping myself from picking them absentmindedly has really helped. In other words. Have a foot care routine to get rid of the rough spots and be more self-aware so you can stop it in its tracks. FYI I also do the same with my face when I get black heads or pimples. Still working on that one. Why do cigarette boxes have to display images of smoking-related diseases while Coca-Cola? For example. Doesn't have images of obese people on their packaging question mark and quad. Despite the popular misconception. Coca-Cola doesn't make you obese. It doesn't help the situation at all that's for sure but cola on its own can't make you obese. You just can't consume enough of it. For example even if you have a can with every meal as long as you're eating salad or low-calorie meals. You won't gain weight. Cigarettes though increase your chance of diseases unconditionally. Some people smoke 50 years and are relatively healthy but there is an increased risk guaranteed. Hypocrisy at its finest simply put. Unfortunately. In the US at least. We have to put a warning label on batteries to not eat them. But we can't put a label on coke saying you're going to die of diabetes if you drink me because that would hurt a business that is paying its fair share and tilde bribes tilde taxes to the American government to get away with tilde killing tilde serving the American people. Smoking cigarettes may cause you to develop cancer which will probably kill you in a dramatic way. Drinking soda may or may not adversely affect your health depending on how much of it you drink by either giving you diabetes or causing you to gain weight. One is more dramatic and obvious than the other. You know the answer to this question. Obesity can't really be traced back to one food usually. It's a combination of many things and unless you require all food to have the labels it wouldn't work. Someone isn't obese because they drink too much coke. It's coke. Pizza. Fried foods. Sugary cereal etc. Whereas smoking is directly linked to cancer. You can definitely say that the one product has caused the death so you can say if you don't do this you significantly reduce the chance of the cancer. What, if anything, can be done about large corporations price gouging everyday products? I know someone who works in the supply chain to be vague. A lot. And I mean a lot of the price increases isn't due to shortages. It's due to hey XYZ increased their prices 5% last month. Let's do 7% this month. Yay. That looks right real convo. Want to know the secret to getting government to regulate corporations, protests and riots. But seriously, I think a lot of issues can also be tied to global political tensions, wars, and the havoc that climate change is wreaking on once reliable crops. On a macro level, the best solution is to increase supply and competition. For example, if the government either encouraged housing construction or built more apartment blocks slash houses themselves, 
the massive real estate companies wouldn't be able to charge whatever they wanted. On a micro level, shopping around a bit more and not buying some of the worst offenders could help reduce future price gouging. Only buy what you absolutely need. Try not to waste food. See if you can get stuff from buy nothing groups. People are always trying to give stuff away. Buy used or borrow stuff. If everyone coordinated and did these things, prices would drop. I am 60 and retired early. I am trying to convince my partner 43 to move back to the Philippines. We have a house that is paid off in the Philippines. We have some land that we grow and sell rice. We have chickens and ducks on our property. Vegetables grow wild all over the property the house is on. My pension would go a lot farther in the Philippines. I only buy what I need in the now. We are not struggling however quality of life in Toronto is declining.